This is Premium Times Half Hour every first day at 11 a.m. Imagine a committee set up to investigate a corruption case. And now, this committee is said to be involved in a case of extortion. This is what today's episode is all about. Another committee in the House of Representatives has been accused of this following an investigation conducted by Premium Times. The Premium Times correspondent, Majid Bakari, who unearthed this issue, will be having a conversation with me. I'm Titi Lopoy Fadari, and welcome to Premium Times Half Hour. This is Premium Times Half Hour, every first day at 11 a.m. On this podcast show, we discuss important issues and matters of national importance. Premium Times is Nigeria's leading investigative and accountability platform, and we bring this show to you weekly as part of our mandate of providing the information you need to make informed decisions. This show spotlights exclusive reports produced by Premium Times reporters from in-depth investigations and unique analyses to human angle stories. But before I delve into today's report, I'll be sharing some reporter stories that we published during the week. The first report is an editorial titled, Tinubu's 100 Days in Office and Facing the Realities Thereafter. The report highlights all the ups and downs of the president's moves since his assumption into office 100 days ago. The next is an interview with Jigawa State Governor titled, How We Are Tackling Challenges of Out-of-School Children Farmer headers conflict in the state. It is in relation to the governor's um, administration's policy in its first 100 days in office and how he's tackling the challenges of out of school children in the state. Lastly, there is an interview with the Israeli ambassador to Nigeria, Michael Freeman, who spoke on how um, Israeli technology can help. Nigeria's agricultural sector. Um, these are some of the interesting reports that we have for you, and you can read up on our website on www.premiumtimesng.com. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll continue the conversation on corruption in the House of Representatives. Stay tuned. This is Premium Times Half Hour, every first day at 11 a.m. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Premium Science Half Hour, brought to you on Premium Science Podcast. I'm Titi Lope Fadari, and I'm with Majid Bakari, Premium Science correspondent who did the investigation exposing the lawmakers in the Green Chamber in an extortion scheme. But before we start the conversation, I will share with you a quick background on this investigative piece. On August 29th, Premium Times published an investigation that exposed that the House of Representatives charged with investigating job racketeering in government parastatals has been engaging in extortion of money from heads of federal ministries, departments, and agencies, including those of tertiary institutions across the country. The Corrupt Adult Committee of 39 lawmakers was constituted following a motion on 5 July by Uluwole Oke, a People's Democratic Party member, who urged the lower legislative chamber to investigate the monumental grafts surrounding personnel and recruitment in the government parastat house. Mr. Oke then requested the House to set up another committee to investigate all the MDAs and tertiary institutions. The Deputy Speaker, Ben Kalu, who presided over the plenary on that day, agreed. He then went ahead to constitute another committee with 37 members, one lawmaker per state, and the federal territory. Now, Mr. Oki was not on the list announced by the speaker, or rather the deputy speaker. Neither was he mentioned by the speaker as a member of the committee. It now remains unclear how he became a very active member of the panel. Now, why we are mentioning this leads to my next point, which is the fact that the report further revealed that there's a, there's a school involved in this whole, whole mix, which is called Lead 
British International School. We discovered that Mr. Oke owns major, um, a major um, ownership of this school. And this particular school is said to be one of the clients of a bureau de change operator who received monies from the heads of the tertiary institutions to convert dollars to Naira, leaving a no paper trail of corruption. Since then, the lawmakers and the heads of tertiary institutions have denied their involvement in the corruption scheme. Now, let's hear from Majid, who did this investigation to know the progress and updates of this report. Hi, Majid. Welcome back to um, PTE Half Hour for the second time. So I think you deserve a round of applause. So you've been counting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to be here, though. Yes, yes, it's good. It's good to have you here. So I recall that the last conversation we had was on the seats of the speaker and the Senate president. Um, being for sale. <laughs> yeah, being for sale. I mean, corruption. And again, um, today you are also talking about corruption, but particularly in the House of Representatives. So the school, which is sort of like in the middle of this whole scandal, lead British International School, is said to um, be a client of a broad exchange operator. Um, they reach out to them, to the um, BDC operator, to you know exchange or convert um, dollars to Naira. So now, in relation to this particular situation, um, based on your investigation, has it not actually raised an eyebrow suggesting that this particular school is used as a front or as a decoy for many other scandalous event aside from what your investigation is talking about oh thank you uh sincerely we uh, we're trying to as much as because uh really put in a lot of effort for the report to be fact based you know without removing you know speculation because the truth about it is that uh, um corruption in nigeria most times is being played in the open but you know that something is going on. But what you can really put your hand to is to be able to establish that evidence. And interestingly and luckily for us, um, we're able to go beyond that speculation and, uh, and establish you know, fact of the matter. And the fact of the matter is this is that uh, politicians have become notorious for uh, creating sophisticated uh, corruption scheme that allows them to operate without leaving you know paper trails and uh, and what have you uh, because what they set up is that they set up absolute deniability and they need a legitimate entity for them to operate so how did it go this is what happened and the school at the center we won't call it at the center because the, uh, there's a limitation to its involvement and the school uh, based on our check is actually owned by uh, one of the lawmakers at the center of this saga, which is Oluwale Oke, okay, a member of the House of Representatives representing the uh, Oluwale Ade Obokum Federal Constituency in Asho State. He owns 75% of this school. And uh, in our inter interaction with uh, the, the BDC operator, we were able to establish that this school has a very long relationship of exchanging money. Uh, with uh, you know by selling money to the selling foreign currency rather to the operator and collecting that equivalent uh, we do not know if the money they've been exchanging has anything to do with corruption or not but what we are able to establish for the fact is that the school played a, play, a prominent role in this one because the person that contacted uh, the bureau the change operator abdullah sambo the person who contacted him his name is esther adoga who actually happens to be a staff of that school and also like uh, an aide to that lawmaker she was the one who made the connection with uh, the, uh, the vice chancellors who set up the entire scheme where money, you know, uh, being paid by the uh, vice chancellor going to the bureau the change operator. And we understand that probably the plan is for after all the vice chancellors have paid, which is for us to just pick up the equivalent in, uh, in dollar or, or pounds or whatever. 
So so far, that is, uh, you know, it's a very very common scheme for for politicians to use legitimate entities as front for them to. But to the extent of the involvement of the school is what we do not know. But what we know so far is that the owner of the school is at the center. And there's there's another particular question that we've been asking, and hopefully we'll get to it at one point. That school was opened around, was registered around 2008, thereabout. And interestingly, Mr. Oli Oli okay, happened to be a lawmaker by then. Mm. So the question around is that, how are you able to uh, open and register a for-profit school mm. while you're still serving as a as lawmaker, lawmaker, considering the position of the code of conduct in terms of uh, the kind of businesses that, that, that politicians or public office so holders that. can can engage but that, that's a conversation for another day all right so um we are in a situation where okay the there's a motion moved to probe um tertiary institutions for um for recruitment misconduct at the green chamber and now a committee was created for that purpose but the committee according to your investigation is also guilty of trying to extort monies from these tertiary institutions the the sacredness of the house of representatives does it not call for it to actually now that a report is indicting its own for extorting monies for an a for um for a probe is it not meant is the um, chamber not meant to actually probe its members as well uh, when we because uh i'd like to remind the audience that we've released about three uh investigation along that line on the same subject matter and uh, we're deliberate you know just pushing everything out at once you know and it was very, when we released the first one because we reached out to them and said this is what we found out what are you going to do and they released a statement and the statement was funny because in the first instance, it was defending the committee and at the same time saying that it's going to prove. So it's very, very funny because if you come out and say we have utmost confidence in our committee and then we view this kind of report as a deliberate attempt to blackmail a committee that is doing good work, but however we are going to investigate. So there's a lot of trust deficit as far as we are concerned and as far as the public is concerned but we're still going to give them the benefit of the doubt that the house is currently on recess we expect that the entire committee or the lawmaker at the center of it or some of those lawmakers should be referred to the committee on ethics and privilege uh, because unfortunately uh, what we find to be uh, to be somewhat disheartening is that the chambers i mean the two of them are always very very fond of using suspension or sanctions against other lawmakers for having dissenting opinions. Mm. But when matters that to do with corruption comes into play, they, they, they seem to kind of brings it down for prioritize those who have dissenting opinions. So historically, uh, which we did in that report, we were able to show uh, historical use of committees to perpetrate corruption. We've, we've not seen anything significantly that gives you that confidence that this action or social action will be taken. But however, they said it's a new house. They are different. News beyond the surface. Investigations that uncover deep secrets. Analysis with thought-provoking perspectives. Reports that focus on human interest. Premium Times, a leading digital news platform, brings you these and more every hour through videos, written and podcast reports. Visit our website on www.premiumtimesng.com and follow us on all social media platforms for timely updates on politics, entertainment, sport and business. Don't miss out. Well, uh, by the time they resume, probably on the 26th, we'll know if they are indeed different or they are just the same. Right? So. Okay, so um, based on your report, um, after it was published, I mean, the, the investigations, they continue. I mean, investigation into the recruitment um, misconduct. And um, the vice chancellors were invited to this probe. 
and according to them they didn't deny the investigation but they said monies were collected because they have a summit to attend in the uk now if they are saying this is the case were details of this particular summit revealed to the public what day like how what duration is it going to span why are they even actually holding a summit in the uk stuff like that uh, uh, the they made an appearance uh, i think it was on a friday if my memory serves me right we we're supposed to publish the second leg of the story on the thursday but we deliberately um how would I put it? Push it further because we wanted to see if they would be decent enough to be able to come out and speak the truth, you know, to Nigerians. Yeah. But unfortunately for them, they decided to go in the not very noble part of coming, you know, to the presence of because the National Assembly represents the entire country because we mm. cannot just fit all ourselves in one room and deliberate. That is why mm. we call it a representative democracy where mm. you delegate certain you know, powers to certain group of persons to represent you. So when you speak in front of the National Assembly or committees, it's as, it's as though that you're speaking to Nigerians. And when those vice chancellors came, you know, when you graduate from schools, you are satisfied, say, in character and in knowledge. So you expect certain level of, um, I don't know the right word to use, to expect from vice chancellors. And when they got there, that's where they gave their narrative. And interestingly, the vice chancellor of the University of George, Professor Tanko Isaya, who happens to be the coordinator of the bribery, mm. happens to not be the one who spoke in the presence of to defend the whole thing. And interestingly, he is not the chairman of the committees of vice chancellors in Nigeria. Mm. He's not the co-chairman who happens to be the com the chairman of the committee is uh, Professor Lilian Salami of the University of uh, um, Benin and uh, why Professor Sagir Abbas of um, Bayero University Kano. Those are the two. They were not there that day. And interestingly, it happens to now be the person coordinating the corruption or mm. the bribery scheme happens to now be the one to speak in their presence because I, I'm sure that most of the other ones are being careful not to commit perjury on behalf of him. So they're like, okay, perhaps they felt like, okay, we're already <laughs> deep in the audition. So just continue mm. in, in your part. And mm. when he now, when he started speaking, I had to go to, because I was there that day, so I brought out my phone and decided to take a, you know, a video recording of him. And his explanation is very simple and laughable at the same time. He said that after they met with the lawmakers, mm -hmm. they had another meeting the following day of vice chancellors because they were at a workshop. And in the course of, after the deliberation, some people raised and said, okay, there's another event in the UK and they all need British pounds. So they decided, okay, uh, since let them put their money together mm. and get a favorable rate from someone who can give them favorable rates. But here is, when you look at the old narrative, it's easy for you to not start pointing out. First one is this is that there are over 5,900 bureau de change operators across the country. How many do you need a specific mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. who is in Abuja? Mm -hmm. So if someone who is in Huyo, someone who is in Medjugorje, someone who is in Ilori, someone who is in ABU Zaria, what do you need one person? Mm -hmm. it, it makes no sense, right? But let us see now give them the benefit of the doubt. Mr. Tanko Isaiah's conversation with the BDC operator shows that there was no concern about rates because as of the day he contacted the man on the 16th of August, he told the man, I said, look, how much is your rate? The person said, okay, this is the prevailing rate in the market. I said, okay, I'm going to, I want to buy dollar or probably British, but I don't know the one I'm buying now. But we are going to send you money. Later on, well, so the man said, okay, the man answered them and said, look, I can't give you a specific rate because it changes. Mm. So if I tell you it's 9.50 now, tomorrow mm. it's now 9.30. You'll be expecting me to give you 9.50. Mm. So until you pay, that is when I'll give you rate. Do you know what Mr. Tanko said? No problem. Just send me your bank account. Wow. Does that look like someone who is concerned about, <laughs> you know, favorable rate? Okay. Of course not. So the story and the way they decided to cook it up, just know that they were not really that well prepared. So they are. They, so it was easy to pick all into. And 
But the, the panel that they appeared before, the reps panel, did they ask them what the details of the summit? No, they did not. They, they were very quick to proclaim, uh, you know, uh, Accept uh, triumph it. and like, oh, this is all, oh, we're going to court, we're going to... So, uh, and, and, and I can assure you that there was a meeting before meeting between the committee and the vice chancellor as to what they are going to say or what, because the, the whole presentation, if you remove the uh, establishment of protocol, introduction of name, it didn't even take up to 15 minutes. Wow. And they were done. And immediately they said, oh, it's, uh, so, but interestingly is that when we live in a society where there are supposed to be check and balance, is that it cannot be the accused, the jury, the lawyer, and also be the judge in your own case. And mm -hmm. that is how we've been able to escalate it beyond the influence of the National Assembly mm -hmm. by actually writing petition to the uh, to the ICPC, one of the major anti graft agencies in the country, and said, look, this is what we found out. This is not someone making allegation against someone. We've gone out there, we've done the research ourselves. Can you take it from us? And we can assure you that we already know that the anti graft agencies, they've already taken some steps. They've taken a lien on the Providence Bank account number that belong to the bureau, the change operators, and the, you know, we've gone there to even validate uh, our, our petition and say, okay, this is what we'll find out. So it is, it is really interesting. Uh, and luckily for us, too, there are a lot of conversations around this particular matter across the country where those lawmakers who are members of those committees are being called to question and say, look, your name is on this committee. And, and let me digress a little bit uh, because some of them have raised this question with us and uh, there's a need to address it and the problem is if someone will tell you and say look you've said all of us are members of this committee and all of us are corrupt but however i've never been in the committee i've never attended the meeting of that committee so why are you not saying i'm corrupt now what i'm going to refer them to is that normally committees are always maybe 20 or if they are standing committee 30 if they are special committee they are 40. but when this committee was set up it was set up by bringing up the they consider it by having one one lawmaker representing each state of the federation including the federal capital territory before they now added an extra three so the in the and the idea behind it is that because the matter of employment federal character must must be represented by every state mm. and that was the idea of setting it up so if you are representing your states in a committee where all employment is across board across the country tell me what could be more important than for you to be at that committee and there is a collective responsibility because when pronouncements are made by committee you don't use plural you use you know the committee uh, singular say the committee it speaks as one single mm. entity. Mm. When reports are done, you must be able to adopt it together. So there is a level of collectiveness. So if, let's assume for the sake of argument and say it's some part of the committee that is corrupt, are you there to perform your role and your responsibility in ensuring that this committee does the right thing? If a particular agency is meant to appear and suddenly is not being questioned, I can't you raise and say, look, we questioned the other one. Why is this one different? So th that is so. There is a there is a moral body that they've been trying to shift and say, no, I, I, I was not there now. But the, the, there is a moral obligation on them that they've not fulfilled their own part in that committee. So, 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 so we've been able to establish it both morally, legally, and everything. Uh, um, it's a lot, and personally. We are sad because the, the, the responsibility given to that committee, it's a very, very important one. We all know there are a lot of terrible, you know, corrupt activities going on with recruitment, a lot of nepotism. We will saw it in that committee, but it's unfortunate that it's always those good committees, good, good assignment that people now end up using. If you recall the uh, Farouk Lawan's case. Farouk Lawan's case, he was dealing with petroleum subsidy. Something that is important for the entire country. Ahmed Nembe was dealing with collapse of the capital market. Something very, very important. So, so, so it's unfortunate that something as important as this is not being taken advantage of to 
you know, for personal use. All right. So if I if I understand now, we are relying on two things to um, sort of see the progress of this um, inf um, investigation, which is one, um, the investigation done being conducted by ICPC, and two, if the one they promised in us that they said they are going to conduct. Okay, as well. Yeah. And okay, let me say three. Uh, okay, the one they will promise that, so that's two. Yes. So uh, for the ICPC, um, is there a duration for the investigation? Are they giving you updates, like back-to-back um, -back updates on their investigation, or how long are you supposed to wait for the investigation to be conducted? Uh, so far, uh, I think um, we can really, because um, when you are trying to establish you know, crime being committed, you have to be thorough you have to go beyond reasonable doubt to be able to establish it. So we can pinpoint it and we're just hoping that for, for the sake of our democracy and for the sake of the institution of the National Assembly, which is the symbol of democracy, that the anti graft agency will be quick about it because like they say, justice delays, you know, justice denied. So that they will be thorough about it and also proceed by, you know, charging people to court and let everybody have a day in court because it is really important for some of us who are doing this kind of report. Uh, it, it, it takes a lot of toll on you as a person, a lot of a lot of impact on you. You know, your safety comes into question. So we're really hoping that they are going to act fast about it, but at the same time to be thorough about it. Okay, so I must commend the fact that you are very brave. <laughs> In doing this report, having to cover the House of Representatives and you are investigating them, exposing them for corruption and still attending, you know, follow-ups of, of um, what has ensued from this particular investigative report. I mean, what I'm talking about here is in question of your safety as a journalist. Have you... Um, in, since the launch or the publish um, the publication of this particular investigate, investigation, have you sort of noticed any suspicious activity? Have you maybe maybe you're scared or maybe you've been threatened? You've been maybe receiving funny phone calls or just anything that has made you feel uneasy since the publication of this report? Uh, thank you so much uh, because um, in, in, um I've not had any reason to to be scared. Thank you. Uh, thankfully for me, so, so a lot of journalists across the world, not just in Nigeria, have not been that lucky. A lot of people have lost their lives for reports that are even smaller than this. Mm -hmm. But thankfully, so far, I've not had that. We've had a lot of subtle threat in people who come as advice and say, ah, uh, this is a great job, oh, uh, but please, uh, let's go now. You're a young man now. You have family now. Uh, you, you know, those, uh, you know, let, I'm just advising you as a brother. You, know, you, you have those kind of, the, uh, you can read in between the line. Mm. You get quite a number of phone calls. And like, yeah, but let us try and get the details. But why not sort of that small? You know, those kind of, you get it. It comes that way. So we're lucky enough not to have, you know, gotten it as bad as it is. So there are some that they will threaten and say, uh, you ought to have revoked your past to enter the National Assembly. Oh, wow. Some we, even among the, the vice chancellors, some of the, um, the most threatening one came from some of the, the wreck of the polytechnics where I tried to, you know, talk to someone and you, you could see the, the aggression and everything. But but so far, we must, I, must, I must say this, that there's a part of it which is about platform. There are a lot of journalists out there who want to do reports. Some of them will even tell you that, look, I have the material. I would have loved to do this report. But some are scared for, even for them to have their job because there are some organizations who may not be able to stand the risk of say, okay, yeah, we have publication with National Assembly, why you we get adverts for them? Why are you not doing this thing that mm, will jeopardize our yeah. business? And there are even individuals that will know that they are going to go after you with lawsuits and whatever. So we must say that, but despite the environment, we know that Nigerian journalists, you know, still continue to do a lot of great reports and we continue to see. So, uh, it's, it's the job. The risk comes with the job. We all mm. just hope that at the end of the day, that collectively as society, we will be able to have a, an environment where journalists can do their work, 
without fear for their lives. Thank you so much for gracing our studio for the second time and um, of course doing the work, the thorough work that a journalist is meant to do which is exposing and um, holding public officials to account and I mean we, we are hopeful that the ICPC lives up to its mandate and concludes this investigation, uh, investigation thoroughly and um, as soon as possible we'll know their findings and then uh, if, if um, hopefully uh, prosecutions or arrests are made in this in the regard and um, we finally know the truth or, or, or it brings out more discoveries for us to for the public to be aware of and um, thank you so much for doing the great work that the journalism profession requires of you Thank you so and we much. Can, we, can't, we, we, are, we are excited for the next one you are going to do. <laughs> <laughs> so that you can count number three, right? All right, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, thank you. So this is where we wrap up today's episode. I hope you had a fantastic time with us. Make sure you keep it a date with us on Premium Times Half Hour every Thursday on our podcast platform. Again, this show is brought to you by Premium Times, a leading multimedia news platform which shares, which shares or serves you with every minute stories that can help you make informed decisions and hold public officials, individuals, and organizations accountable. And we have cartoons, videos, podcasts, and other interesting content for your delight. And for timely updates on politics, entertainment, sports, and business, do visit our website, www.premiumsciencenry.com and follow us on all our social media platforms. We'll be here again, same time, same day next week. Myself and Bajid Bakari do have a great weekend. News beyond the surface. Investigations that uncover deep secrets. Analysis with thought provoking perspectives. Reports that focus on human interest. Premium Times, a leading digital news platform, brings you these and more every hour through videos, written, and podcast reports. Visit our website on www.premiumtimesng.com and follow us on all social media platforms for timely updates on politics, entertainment, sport, and business. Don't miss out.